Do we have to? Oh god, this episode, I'm locked. We already watched it, we may as well talk about it. I'm Ember, and this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 10, Breakup, Breakdown. A.K. not my favorite episode from this season. It was kind of nice having the uh, horseshoe on the other hoof. Oh? I'm usually the one cringing. Yeah, I was cringing so much I was covering my face and plugging my ears as you we were watching this episode. It just somehow managed to cram all of my most hated romantic tropes into a single episode. I mean, all of them. Everything from the, we're breaking up because I accidentally overheard you saying that you were going to break up with me. I didn't say that, but you said this. Well, you only heard part of the conversation. Then the accidental package delivered to someone else and they think it's a secret admirer and they never find out who the secret admirer is or they find out it was someone else that didn't care about it or it's meant to go to some they just uh it just kept getting worse i think the only positive thing really is that kind of technically we got lara and bonbon bon confirmed as a couple but you could label that as oh well, they're just friends because if you do it that way for the longer Hey, Celestia, the longer we do this show, the closer to the outskirts I'm willing to get. <laughs> the Cutie Mark Crusaders at the end, because Sweetie Belle goes, I have two Sun Pony specials. I, I kind of winced when that happened. I was like, oof. I'm like, and the fandom is off and running. There they go. My fanfic is confirmed. No, it's not. Though, another thing that kind of made it semi-confirmed is the fact that Hasbro released an official kind of card that had a bunch of couples on it, and one of them was Laura and Bonbon. Bon. So, could be, couldn't be. But let's get on to this. Oy. Discord was actually pretty fun in this episode. I did enjoy him. Discord was among the better parts of the episode. And Spike and Big Mac lose points immediately for taking advantage of their friend's special abilities, and then not even rewarding him with a game or anything else that he actually wanted to do. That's rude. Very, because you don't just have friends to be able to use their special abilities. You can ask them nicely, may we please use this? And if they say yes, cool. If they say no, guys, then you're, you just have to wait. Also, what, what paper is that card made out of to survive baking being baked in a pie? Because whatever it was, he should have used it for the label. Yeah. Also, Derpy confirmed his male pony. A male, no, that still doesn't work. Derpy confirmed as a postal pony. That no, also doesn't, doesn't work. work. Okay, she works in the mail department, okay? Why doesn't that, nothing works! <laughs> We're just gonna move on, you know what I mean. Does Derpy work for the parcel service work? It's close enough. I'm pretty sure there's some weird connotation in there, but we're just gonna move on. That was also another nice thing to see in the episode. It's just the whole stuff going on with Big Mac and the Kitamar Crusaders. And could they have been a little less subtle in trying to find out who Sweetie Belle's admirer was? I was kind of hoping that we might avoid episodes like this for the Kitamar Crusaders. Because it is kind of, it's actually very tropish for three girls to go, Ooh! Secret admirer, boys, I'm interested. Especially now that they have... They're marks of young adulthood. I mean, they could have handled that so much better. They could have handled what was going on with Big Mac and his special sun pony better. Because, ooh, ooh. Amber can attest to how much I was like, ooh, ooh. I even, I even asked to pause the episode. Usually it's Amber going, please, for the love of God, pause it. <laughs> he was like, may I please, please. It's just like I said, they took all of my hated romantic tropes and put them into one episode. I was like, oh god, we're getting this trope. Then suddenly, oh no, we're getting this trope. Then, why? Then, no! Because <laughs> I started counting them. Like, we got up to like four or five. I lost track after the pain made me numb. Because... The misdelivered package, the misheard conversation, the eavesdropping, the breakup with them before they break up with you, the 
wallowing and suffering before something's even happened. I mean, really, he was sobbing his story out to the Skull Soldier. Like the best part of the episode was like the end because of that scene between Spike and Discord. That was just fun. Basically the, who do you think broke Sugar Bell's axle wheel? Yeah, I pretty much realized that the moment it happened in the episode. I was like, yeah, Discord did that because he went, ah. <laughs> the real question is, did Discord cause this whole thing? Because at the beginning of the episode, that's what I thought was going to happen because Discord got, you know, they were rude to him. So he's Discord. He's like, I'm going to have a little fun with this. And I thought something was going to happen to the pie. It's going to get delivered to her and whoops, wrong card. Because Discord did take the card out and put it back. So plenty of opportunity to switch out the card. But I didn't think Discord was doing it because the entire time he was just trying to get them to play Ogres and Oubliettes. And if everything had gone smoothly, that would have happened much quicker because Big Mac would have been in the barn waiting for Sugar Bell and Spike would have been free. Instead, they were trying to cheer him up and make him feel better and come up with different things. I mean, really, how many of Discord's monogrammed thousand-year-old silk handkerchiefs was Big Mac going to go through? Nice memory, by the way. <laughs> also, like, whoever loses this mows my lawn for eternity. Is it, is it a riding lawn mower? Question. <laughs> Apparently, in a question, they have riding lawn mowers. <laughs> I'm like, a riding a lawnmower? It just hit me right now, actually, when I was thinking about that sense. Like, wait a minute, a riding a lawnmower? I haven't seen that kind of technology anywhere in Equestria. The closest we got is a steam engine. How do you make a riding a lawnmower? I know Discord could make a riding a lawnmower. Maybe that's where Spike learned it from. Or, you know, uh, when would you have a riding a lawnmower in a comic book? I'm sure it's somewhere. But, you know, look at how modern the Power Ponies comic series is. And then out comes the tweezers. I'm like, you can't mow a lawn with tweezers. You pluck the grass. That's not mowing. That's tweezing. That would be like, showed like little scissors. That would have been a lot better. A tiny pair of scissors or actual lawn clippers. There is such a thing. I've used those. So have I. <laughs> One of the many things we have in common. <laughs> so what were your most despised parts of this episode? Basically everything that was in Discord and even some of that was Discord. Mm, so let's narrow it down to what parts did you not like about Discord? Mainly towards the beginning when he was like, oh, love isn't real. I love the dig at, oh, you bought into the whole greeting card industry thing. There were several references to a lot of things that uh, holidays get nailed, like how Halloween gets nailed for the candy companies created it. I'm like, no, it's much older than that. Same with Valentine's Day, but please continue. But the modern twists and, you know, Discord has a little bit of a point because it's Hearts and Hooves Day. Not all sentient species that are canon have hooves. Mm. So this is very specifically an equestrian holiday. Well, where it came from, you can understand. Love, poison, whoops. Yeah. Also, why are they celebrating this? That doesn't make sense. Because that's where Hearts and Hood Days came from, apparently. Because I remember in the episode where the love poison was made up, we, that was the origin story of Hearts and Hooves Day. So it was kind of a, oh, let's take this bad thing and make a good thing out of it. Let's remember this every year so we don't do something stupid. And then it probably devolved into... A standard holiday. Yes. Like our book of holidays. Go check out the Golden Book reading list. <laughs> Yes, plug your videos. They need to be plugged because they are awesome. Uh, speaking of holidays, I would love to go over to Japan during Christmas and order a bucket of KFC. Because that's a tradition over there. They don't really have the same KFC because it's also a special, not really just a bucket. It's actually a whole meal you order. You can order whole meals at KFC in the United States. Yeah, but it's a special meal they put together just for the holiday over there. Because they can make a thing. Well, that would be kind of fun. Just to go over there, I know it's KFC, but it's different over there. It's kind of like when you go to McDonald's or Burger King over there, they don't actually have a lot of beef. 
No, way too expensive to import. There's not enough grasslands to have cattle domestically. So they have other things in the menu. I would order one of those unique things for Japan from there. Because I wouldn't just go to Japan to just order American food. I would go to the cat cafes, the maid cafes, you know, all their different restaurants. Probably just the cat cafe, though, because that sounds really cool. And we have stuff like that over here. Maybe a cat and dog cafe. I wonder if there's any around this area. <laughs> As you can tell, I am not really interested in this episode. <laughs> but since we're back, what were your favorite highlights from the episode? Discord listing all the different kinds of tea. Oh, yeah, that was fun. I do like tea. All kinds of tea. Like, wow, you're seriously brushing off the fact that you like Fluttershy. Can we go back a, a season or two to when you went to Changeling's territory because they had Fluttershy? Also, friendship is a form of love. So, love is real. I would have used that as, like, friendship is a form of love, Discord. Like, then you would have to change your two to romantic love isn't real. And then you would be like, um, well, then how's every pony getting married? Tax reasons. Do you know how much of a tax cut you get in a quest year for being married? <sighs> oh. And going back to continuing tropes, Cranky and his lady doing the whole Lady and the Tramp thing. Ever since that movie came out, that has become a trope. I'm glad they're still in this. Sh I'm, I'm glad for that reference, though. I really like those two. And that they're still shown in the series, yes. Because, I mean, they haven't really been a focus since their wedding. Which was a fun episode. I thought you were bringing the present. <laughs> best sister moment ever. Among the best. We need more of that. You know what we need is like a slice of life episode where nothing big is going on, where there's like no arguments or anything. It's just us following the two sisters through their day. And it's interesting because of like the people that come in and interact with them. And we get to see more of them interacting with each other. We got a bit of that when Starlight went to solve the friendship problem. But because it was a friendship problem, we had more of the antagonistic, you know, they don't appreciate what each other does. But the thing is, you would think Celestia would be more appreciative. Yes, I know we're tangenting again. But there, do you really want to hear us bash the episode for 25 minutes? <laughs> Celestia had to do both. She raised the sun and the moon for the entire time that Luna was imprisoned. And we discussed at the time that, okay, does, cause, since she doesn't seem to be familiar with the dreamwalking, was no one's dreams getting watched for that thousand moon period and just for the fact that she didn't have to stay up 24 hours and do the sun and the moon she should be grateful for her sister being back and lavender come on it's nice to have around it's very soothing also pretty good tea very hmm can't think of any technical oh wait yeah a couple of technical little things like big mac expression which we paused on <laughs> when he was crying was great I scream capped it. Because it was just this perfect moment. The animations on both Spike and Big Mac were really smooth in this episode. They were flowing like crazy in the expressions on Spike. And I'm like, wow, they really nailed the animation in this episode. Too bad it was this episode. Is there anything else you'd like to go over? Or should we actually just wrap this up with our final thoughts? I was kind of with Spike on the... Oh, maybe it was this, this, and this. And I'm like, when Spike said that, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Also, when we first overheard Sugar Bell, I'm like, oh, is she moving to Ponyville? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That was my first thought. Yeah, she's moving to Ponyville because she really likes Big Mac, so she wants to make the big next step. Yeah, because long-distance relationships are difficult. So they had to put so many of those tropes in the single episode. I would have been okay with one. I wouldn't have been as cringy, but like... As they just kept layering it on. It's like they wanted to just get all these tropes out of the way. So they put them all in one episode and went, yeah, we're just going to get them out of the way and move on from there. Now we don't have to worry about them anymore. People won't be asking us to do them with the Keaton Mark Crusaders. Though, that reminds me of that awesome cameo of Button Mash. So I was like, gotcha. Also, do you two happen to... Please say no, please say no, please don't. <laughs> Yeah, and such unsubtle ways of asking. It's like a jackhammer to your head. Kind of like, can't remember the name of the drink, but it's from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 
I think it was described as a lemon wrapped in a gold bar or a gold bar wrapped in a lemon smashed into your forehead. Gargle blaster or something like that? It's been too long since I read the books. Is I stalled out about halfway through Restaurant at the End of the Universe. Because I was actually given the ultimate guide, which is like reading a giant dictionary. So I never felt like I was getting anywhere. It's a good reason to stop because I read the dictionary one somewhere. I got to E. <laughs> then even I got bored to tears. <laughs> I really did stop one summer and read the dictionary for fun. Like I said, I got to E. Then I got bored again and found something else. Please understand that I lived in the middle of nowhere. Surrounded by forest. It was nice and everything, but there were times where you're just like, I've already walked today through the forest five times. It's summer. There's nothing to do, and I don't feel like walking down to the river to swim. Oh, look, there's a dictionary. This is better than counting the holes in the ceiling, which you didn't have, thank God. <laughs> Yay, more personal stories. But I'm thinking we should wrap up this episode. Yes, yes, because it would be a shame for... An episode about an episode that you were cringing over to be longer than the actual episode. We did badly enough last time with all our tangenting and going over the episode time. Yeah. So, any final thoughts on the episode before we go to the outro? Henshin! Well, nice animations. I wasn't cringing as much as Lux. Mainly because apparently I haven't seen or watched as many romances, so... I'm a romance fiend. I like romances. Also, my mom reads a lot of romance novels, so I got a little bit of exposure to the tropes in those. Yeah, and uh, that's not really my cup of tea, so I don't have the same inundation, or very at least not the same knee-jerk reaction. The animations were really good. Big Mac talked about that crinkle nose that she did when she laughed. They showed it to us. Now I want to go back and see if she did that in the other episodes. It was cute. Also, this is the most Big Max talked in a while, which was a nice callback to the flashback episode where he cut back on talking because he references that. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that episode too during him like, I learned to keep my mouth closed because of this. Words do hurt and they can get you in trouble. I know from experience. Oi. And then, you know, a nice little summary at the end, like, I suppose there was some sort of lesson in this, like, you know, oh yeah, communication, don't eavesdrop, etc., etc. Also, I like the, I overheard you when I was hiding in the bushes. Uh, it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, yes, it is exactly as bad as it sounds. You were hiding from your girlfriend in a bush for no reason. Also, isn't she like the most forgiving person in the world? Because I was pretty sure she was going to be really mad at him. Because, dude, you just broke up with her, dude. That's painful. I mean, considering she just moments before said she couldn't imagine living without you at this point, And then you break up with her. So she was incredibly hurt. The stuff he said when he helped her stand up was... Nice that, you know, even though I feel horrible right now, I wouldn't trade any of it because of how wonderful it was. And I still care about you. Then why were you... Yeah, idiot. I mean, it's like... Ah, uh, Fushigi Yugi, which... Please no corrections on my pronunciation in the comments. The Mysterious Play. Because, like, every two seconds, one of the two of them has a misconception about their relationship and their off again oh my god i like that series but oh my god that's basically my biggest complaint about the series is their constant oh i'm in love with you oh i'm in love with you too but we can't be together because of this oh but i love you but we can't be together because of this no i love you but we can't be together because of this you can just throw up your hands at that and then like just enjoy the rest of it you know that was such an odd voice quirk like this priest guy every time he would say a sentence he would then go you know it's kind of like Naruto and Delta Bio or Believe It. There are advantages to watching in Japanese. Yeah, you can't understand when they have those voice quirks in there because sometimes those voice quirks come over to the English one because it's present in the Japanese, but you don't pick up on it because you're not a native in that language. But let's move on <laughs> to the outro. It's morphing time. 
Uh, he does have the hair for it today, ladies and gentle colts. Hmm, I do. No, I didn't look at me. I just put my hand up to my hair and went, ooh, I feel. Uh, well, I hope you've enjoyed our ranting and raving and sidetracking and tangents for this episode of My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 8, Episode 10, Breakup Breakdown. Thanks for listening to the hopeless romantic rant and rave about all the romance tropes. I can't help it. I really like a good romance. So we're not always this negative. There's other videos you can watch. Prove it. <laughs> They're out there. There's playlists. Boy, do we have playlists. Lots of videos. So like, I understand if you dislike this one. Comment, share, watch more videos. Subscribe. You're probably already subscribed. The analytics say you're probably subscribed. If you want to see more of Lux's art, he does post stills of it on the internet. There are links. He also takes commissions. There are more links. We accept money through Patreon and Coffee. Even more links. Hiya! Who? Ya! Ha! And yes, there are even drawings of Link from Legend of Zelda. Hiya! Uh, Patreon starts at a dollar, and coffee is one-time pledges in increments of three. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.